Tonight, outrage in Egypt. Thousands protest after Egypt's president is accused of assuming the powers of a dictator. Reports from Holly Williams in Cairo and Chip Reed at the White House. This is the CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley. Good evening. Scott's off tonight. I'm Anthony Mason. Two days ago, Egypt's President Mohamed Morsi won widespread praise for brokering a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. But today, thousands of Egyptians protested after Morsi granted himself broad new powers, putting his decisions above any court. Morsi called the move temporary, but at least 100 people were injured as protesters clashed with police in cities across Egypt, including Alexandria and the capital. Holly Williams begins our coverage tonight in Cairo. Thousands of Egyptians poured onto the streets, furious with the country's first democratically elected president. They accuse Mohamed Morsi of behaving like a pharaoh, making a power grab by presidential decree. During the Arab Spring, Egyptians came together on Tahrir Square to topple the country's longtime dictator, Hosni Mubarak. Today, Mr. Morsi's critics clashed with his supporters, while police fired tear gas canisters into the crowd. He's saying that he's our God, said this protester. He's made a mistake. And this woman said that after marching for freedom, the country's ended up with a new dictator. In Alexandria, an angry crowd stormed the offices of the Muslim Brotherhood, from which President Morsi draws his support. They ransacked the building and then set it on fire. From outside his presidential palace today, Mr. Morsi addressed the nation. He said the new measures are designed to cut through political gridlock. It was Allah's will that I became the president, he said, and we need to go forward with the new steps, not backwards. But only 52% of Egyptians voted for the president. Now many of those who didn't worry that Mr. Morsi wants to stifle democracy and impose his own Islamist vision on the country. And we're joined now by Holly Williams in Cairo. Holly, given the scale of the protests, is there any sign that Morsi might change his mind? Well, when President Morsi addressed the nation today, he sounded very firm. And if he were to backtrack now, that would be a big loss of prestige for him. And let's be clear, many Egyptians support him. They elected Mohamed Morsi because they want a conservative Muslim as president, and they want him to push ahead with his program of reforms. But for many more liberal Egyptians, they feel angry. They say that the Egyptian revolution has been betrayed, and they don't show any sign of backing down either. Now, that leaves Egypt, a country with so many problems, a country that's so important in the broader Middle East, deeply divided. All right, Holly Williams. Thanks, Holly. So what's the reaction at the White House? Chip Reed is there with that part of the story. Chip? Well, good evening, Anthony. So far, the only official reaction has come from the State Department, which says Morsi's actions, quote, raise concerns. In a written statement, a department spokesperson says one of the aspirations of the revolution was to ensure that power would not be overly concentrated in the hands of any one person or institution. But, of course, Morsi's actions would concentrate enormous power in his hands. That puts the administration in a difficult position because President Obama called Morsi three times this week during the Gaza ceasefire negotiations, and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton flew to Cairo to meet with him. After the ceasefire took effect, administration officials praised Morsi as a peacekeeper. Now, Anthony, the White House has to figure out how to react to a so-called peacekeeper who is uh, stirring up so much protesting. All right, Chip Reed at the White House. Thank you, Chip. The ceasefire in Gaza that Morsi brokered is holding despite a deadly shooting today at the border. Israeli troops fired warning shots at 300 Palestinians to force them to move away from the fence that separates Israel from Gaza. Israel considers that area off limits. A Palestinian man was later shot and killed. His relatives say he was trying to plant a Hamas flag when he was shot. 